You want it? Now you got it. Mohamed Kisi is a legendary fighter and actor that we all love to hate in Kickboxer. Today, he will motivate you through his knowledge of both mind, body, and backstage stories of our favorite movies. He even got to train with the great Ali. This is Mohamed Kisi for the Bruce Willow Podcast. Guys, you guys made my childhood. Yes, yes. You look so good, man. 24 years of age. Yeah. Where does time go, Mohammed? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> What's nice about all this is so many young people, when they watch that movie, they went to the gym. They could have been doing bad things. And they went to the gym, and that was that's my happiness mm, because, yes. because we help a lot of mummy like this. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, mummy is, is always special place in our heart, all of us. So when the daughter or the son goes bad, it's the mummy who suffers. So we are happy to help the mummy, having so many young people doing sports instead of doing bad things. Wow, that is unbelievable message. And I believe that some of those 80s movies were so genuine in the way they were done that we still are addicted to it. And we still believe that there was nothing else that beats them in heart, you know. From then on, you know, we have a lot of marketing, we have a lot of, uh, you know, a little bit of bikinis, a little bit of bloodshed, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And Van Damme does show his butt in Bloodsport, but, uh, you know, <laughs> marketing, right? It's marketing. Uh, so, um, Absolutely. <laughs> Mohamed, Mohamed, uh, let's start off the interview right away. And I want to know how come, because we had a lot of technical difficulties to get this beginning, Uh, to get this starting, um, how come are how come you are so patient with all the times I ask you? Please try this software. Please try that software. Are you a very patient man in your life, or was the martial arts that brought that to you? Do you meditate? What do you do? I, I think it was from my very young age meeting Jean Claude Van Damme. I was seven, and he was nine, and. Uh, He was a very, very difficult kid with his parents. And uh, I uh, became really close to him, and he was tough to live with. You know, he's not easy. And I think that helped me from the very young age to be very patient. So I thank Jean-Claude to be very difficult for me to be very patient. <laughs> <laughs> mm, how come? I mean, I mean, was he very anxious? A very anxious person that had to have everything right now. Oh man, man, you 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 can't. You know, uh, he's basically he's he's bipolar. You know, so mm. so uh, sometimes he can really go crazy. So, uh, uh, but he's so talented and he's he's a genius. I mean, you know, uh, genius on 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 his um, way of, uh, of working so hard, you know, he's a hard worker and um, always, you know, moving action. He's always very active, very, a lot of energy. Um, and I believe uh, many people who are bipolar, they also have a very good quality. It's, mm -hmm. you have, You know, it's going back and forth, you know, so you have to know him. And uh, many people who don't know him, like on the set of Lot Sport, Kickboxer, I was always there to try to arrange the problems. Uh, so uh, because, of course, I knew him so well, I knew how to handle him. So anyone who had a problem, producers or director, they come to me to fix the problem. So uh, as I said, from a very early, early age, you know, we were always together 
And uh, as I said, very, very tough uh, to, to live with. And uh, But I had some uh, connection with him, especially in the very, very beginning. I was very little. You know, I was like maybe eight. And it was the Mother's Day, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, so many uh, people, uh, uh, I mean, so many young like me they, they they had something to offer to their mother we are we come from a very poor family and and i didn't have anything and i wanted to really to offer something to my mommy and uh, and jean claude said uh, come i'll show you something i didn't show to nobody his little coffer you know coffre fort and the code he gave me the code <laughs> <laughs> he opened and he took uh, a little uh, uh, you know, paper money, you know, like 50 Belgium franc at that time, it was a lot of money. And um, basically, it's five euro this time, but five euro in the uh, 60s was a lot of money. A lot of so money. So I, yeah. I, I went and bought a beautiful gift, gift to my mother. And uh, from that day, from that day, I had to be patient because <laughs> he was in my heart and uh, I never forget what he did, and I became v- very close and 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 be and very patient with him on anything he does because he did that gesture which I never forgot. Wow! Wow! What a what an amazing story! And uh, I believe that uh, yes, I, I believe that's one of the the first things in life. I mean, if you guys were seven years old, I mean that's one that's got to be one of the first impressions of true kindness. Of yes. one of one human being to another who are not even you know brothers or b- by blood you know so that's yeah. that's gotta be that's gotta be uh, something that shakes uh, your your character in the long run but yes you you were touching a point in which I'm, I'm I've been thinking about that a lot because there's a fine line between you being a balanced individual or a successful individual and sometimes it's not the same. I mean, a lot of people who we find very successful, very charismatic, they have that proactive nerve and they're always doing everything. But when they're not moving, they get down, they get very depressed, like almost in the bipolar sense, like you said. And um, it's it's strange that sometimes we get to find out a little bit more about our heroes' lives and we get to know that, okay, they're not always happy. They're not always excited. And I think that's a very deep personality trait and sometimes being famous might not be the best help would you agree absolutely absolutely actually uh you know we worked so hard together he became champion in karate in belgium i became boxing champion in 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 belgium he loved boxing so he came and saw all my fights and also i came in all see all his fights in karate and uh, even his master asked me to to do uh, karate in uh, la coupe des espoirs uh, it's like a tournament big tournament i said you know i'm more boxer but he saw me training because i was going many times to train with him karate and he came also many times to train boxing and uh, his uh, master claude guts uh, asking me to be in the tournament, so finally I did it, and 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 I I arrived to the final. I, I did very good actually, and um, basically we became like brothers. He loved the food of my mama. He called uh, my mother Ma, my father Ba. I called his mother, you know, Elian. I called her Mami. Uh, I called his father Papi. You know, we were extremely close. So. Um, basically, we also had the same uh, idols. We loved Bruce Lee and we loved Muhammad Ali. And then, you know, we, and I can see you have a Bruce Lee there, uh, uh, a poster. And I have to say, he he's the one who really uh, basically uh, uh, give us a lot of uh, motivation, inspiration to, to, to do movies. Mm-hmm. So uh, we went, him and I, because, you know, we, in 1982, we went together like everybody says, it's impossible. What are you dreaming? It's crazy. Going from Brussels to Hollywood to do movies. I mean, you even cannot speak English. And of course, we didn't, we couldn't speak in English at first. 
And then, you know, arriving there, you cannot work because you don't have a visa to work. You just have a visa touristic. So they said, you know, I mean, it's crazy. And you have American people there who didn't make it. And you're going to go there and make it. I mean, come on, stay on earth and just have a salary, a monthly payment. And, uh, you know, like everybody else. And uh, basically, uh, the only person who believed in us, it's him and me and God. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were praying all the time. And, you know, we were like so passionate. And then we left uh, for Hollywood. And there we struggled, was very, very tough from 1980 to 98, from 82 to 86, four years. And one of our very first movie was Breakdance, where you see Jean-Claude and I uploading and dancing. And we were just a figuration, a extra part, you know. So uh, basically, uh, we, we had a very, very tough time. But then we had our first big break uh, with Menachem Golan, Yoham Globus. We did blood sport who became very famous kickboxer, very famous Lionheart, very famous. Here is Lion, here is Breakdance. Yeah, yes. there you when are in the short. you see in the background, you'll see me and Jean-Claude. Here you can see me with the black short. I look <laughs> a lot like Juan Paredes there. And then oh, yeah. you have Jean-Claude next to me. So basically, uh, uh, that was our, uh, and we were like already so happy because we were in the movie. So, uh, but, uh, you know, after, like you were saying, it's not easy because after the success, it can be tough, you know. Mm -hmm. So after 1989, after Lionheart, we split up him and I because when you really have no more respect, it's very difficult to stay together because oh. respect is very important. Uh, once that is broken, uh, it can happen th bad things. So it's better to keep the distance. So mm. basically, uh, you know, for like 20 years, we didn't talk. Uh, and unfortunately, he went, you know, into drugs. Even his father said he should have say, stayed with Mohammed, you know. So he should have stayed with, with, with him. Uh, because when we start, when we stopped to be apart, that was also because we had a pact and it was not respected. So we were going to the mosque on Friday because I come from a Muslim family. And then we were, we go, him and I pray in the mosque on Friday. And then on Sunday, we go pray at the church because he's Christian. So, and we had a pact, which again, you know, was not uh, uh, respected. Plus, Respect was not respected. That was more important. Pact is very important, but respect, it's also, you know, when you don't respect your pact means you don't have respect. So anyway, we split apart and I went on my own. I did way more social work and uh, did a lot of schools because of Tong Po, who did huge. So I was all over the world trying to motivate people to do sports and not drugs. So after 20 years, we spoke again. And, um, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, you're right. Uh, when someone, uh, he, he said it himself, you know, everybody knows he took a lot of drugs. So uh, uh, that's too sad. It's too bad. But I prefer to talk about positivity because yeah. negativity, Nobody really wants to hear that. I mean, we have a lot of positivity because of Jean-Claude, because of his move, because of his body, because of his split. So many young people went from the street to the sport so that people never can forget that he did so, so much for the young people, you know, yes. and that's uh, that's big happiness, big satisfaction. Oh, Mohammed, thank you so much for sharing because uh, actually that's uh, that uh, you can tell that it comes from the heart because you guys were such close friends. And obviously it's not to dwell on the negative and a lot of people, I know a lot of people who are always, even in the martial arts, I find it amusing that some people are always looking for who would beat who, who would beat up who, would Van Damme beat this guy, would this guy beat Van Damme? I mean, it's like, 
<laughs> who cares, man? Who cares, man? It's all about the passion, the the the. It's all about the intensity that people put on their work, and it's work. I mean, blood sport is work. Kickboxing is is work. I mean, it's it's work of art. Like martial arts, it's art. It's a life form. So I really love your perspective uh, per perspective on being uh, one to look more to the positive. Sometimes I only like to look at the negative because um, it helps us. And when people as big as Jean-Claude Van Damme share with us that he had a hard time, whether it be with drugs, with family, with whatnot, I mean, that can help people not fall into the same trap because it's, it's easy to fall to that trap. But just to, just to, uh, um, to, to, get the, to, to, um, to get to know where you guys are right now, do you still talk to each other right now? I mean, are you still friends or have you never gotten back to that point um, even 20 years later when, when you said you met again? No, actually, as I said, we, we, we didn't speak for 20 years. So if you do your count from 1989, so it's like uh, over 10 years ago. Uh, so basically, like for 10 years now, we are talking uh, we went and, uh, you know, I was with him on the remake of Kickboxer. You can see me there. You know, yeah. I had a little, uh, little, uh, you know, cameo part. Uh, I am behind the bars and he says uh, something to me and I say, you forgot about me, you know. So um, basically, uh, uh, we 10 years now we've been talking. We went to different places together like Dagestan. Uh, where you had like 40,000 people. So if you didn't see it, I can send it to you. Um, so we try, we try to, 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 you know, because I said our, our story was so beautiful in the beginning. Let's finish it beautiful, you know. I mean, the middle is gray, black. Uh, that happened for everybody. Let's try to finish it beautifully. So now he's like basically uh, having a new movie to speak, talk, you know, you can have to go to internet, say, uh, what's my name? That he said it would be his last movie before he retired. And there he wants, you know, uh, people like uh, uh, in the 80s, like Dolph Lundgren, Bolo, myself, my brother who played Attila in Lionheart. Um, basically, he wants to do uh, that last movie with us. So hopefully, you know, we'll have a beautiful ending between us. Oh, that's fantastic. But uh, okay, going back and way back, you said you started doing boxing. Uh, did you start to do boxing at seven years of age? Yes, yes. Wow. I was there at seven at the same complex, uh, sportif. Jean-Claude at that time was nine because he's, he's born in 1960. I'm born in 1962. So... Basically, what, what was uh, what was your first at that age? What was and your then first with time? We became really good friends, and then like brothers, you know, everything yeah. with time. Of course, he loved boxing. Came down because we were at the basement doing boxing. He was on the ground floor where he was doing karate. So sometimes I go to him. Sometimes he comes to me, and then you know I go to his home. He comes to my home, and then uh, we share the same passion. Uh, in the sports and in the movies. So we were going to see all the time movies together. We were going to spar always together for many years. We just love that. So yeah, basically, uh, yes, that's, we that's started right. very young. If, if, if it were nowadays, two kids in the basement, they would be like this, like... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad there was no social media that you guys were like focused on one given task. You know, it's very difficult difficult to get youngsters in line with with focus right right now uh, so what was your first so reference? be careful also social media and you know everything we have today it's you also have the good side you know because yeah. at that time my god it would have been so much easier for so many things for us uh, to make it in the business i mean today they have more chance than that time trust me mm, yeah for sure for sure uh, uh, so you you started at a very young age with boxing. Why boxing? What was your first uh, uh, reference? Was it Muhammad Ali? Oh my God! I mean, first of all, because my older brother who played Attila in Lionheart Attila. was doing boxing, yeah. but also 
before that, I mean, my God, from my <laughs> already uh, uh, five years old, four years old, six years old. I mean, uh, I don't even remember, maybe even two years old, three years old, because my father loved Muhammad Ali. And, you know, uh, we were in Belgium. So we, we get up at three o'clock in the morning to see the fight of Muhammad Ali. Wow. So, I mean, from my very, very young age, I was watching at Muhammad Ali and I was so inspired by him. And also, uh, even my physique, my, you know, boxing skill, people say you really have similarity with Muhammad Ali. I didn't try to copy him. He was just very natural. I just watched him from my very young age and I start just, you know, to move and 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 to box like him because just by <laughs> watching him all the time we can see that in bloodsport if you can pull the 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 clip uh, please uh the, the, we can see that in bloodsport that you're fighting uh, we're using that tata those those jabs those quick jabs and those those hooks yeah. uh, right, right after this fight with uh, john claude van damme we can see uh, you fight And uh, I know that this, yeah, exactly. This is very Muhammad Ali alike. Too bad yeah. you tried it on Bolo, though. <laughs> yeah. Bolo, yeah, exactly. very nice guy. My God, so wonderful man. Already at that time, he was in the 40s, you know, so he was our older. And for us, it was like an honor to be with him because he worked on our favorite movie enter the dragon with bruce lee so for us it was like wow you know a dream come true wow and great reactions how how did you guys learn the reactions i mean you come from sparring you come from boxing uh, jean claude comes from karate uh, but uh, how do you learn where did you learn the reactions to react so good to what would be movie fights because a lot of the fighters sometimes don't have Uh, the same body expression that you need to in the fight choreography world? I mean, we were already in a very young age doing some demonstration, you know, Jean-Claude and I, and we loved, uh, you know, doing like fight scenes and and we watched so many fight scenes already with Bruce Lee. So we were playing around with came up really naturally. And then, you know, uh, it happens like Bloodsport, I, I most of the choreography, I did it, you know, uh, with also Jean-Claude. Uh, but I wanted him to focus on his, you know, uh, starring role. Uh, and uh, I took care of the casting of the fight scenes, the, the choreography. Of course, we had also some help of Frank Dukes, uh, the real Frank Dukes. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, was natural. And uh, I love doing the choreography. I love showing to people how to move. And it was really uh, coming to us naturally. Mm, okay. So what was in your heyday of competition before you went to the United States? Uh, how old were you when you when you went to, to, to California? 18? I was around 19. Okay. Uh, 19, uh, 20. How, how, what was a typical day for you? Okay. What was a typical day for you in terms of training? I mean, uh, I like to get our audience motivated and to know the regimen of the stars and what they did to get to that amazing physique. So did you wake up very early and have like uh, one session in the morning, another session in the afternoon? How was a typical day in your prime of uh, boxing training, of martial arts training? I mean, we we were, of course, needed, to, even if we didn't like it too much, uh, but we had to do it, is is cardio. So, so you know, when you do fight scenes, you, when you do fight in karate, in boxing, it's, it, it takes a lot of cardio, you know? So, so we were uh, early in the morning going to the forest and, uh, you know, jogging. Uh, so it was uh, around 10 kilometers. Uh, of of jogging in the morning before going to to breakfast, you know. So, mm. and trust me, uh, your breakfast you you eat it very well because you, you are so hungry. <laughs> so after the shower, let me tell you, uh, it's it's not like sometimes if you wake up and you don't do nothing, it, you don't have the same, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
how you say that uh, the same you desire, love it. The same I mean, hunger, it's, yeah. it, it's so good. It tastes yeah. so good. Even if it's not so good, it, it tastes good because mm. it, you are hungry. So anyway, that is uh, something we do, which also helped us to be stronger in life. Because it's not easy, of course, to wake up in the morning and do that uh, all the time. And uh, but we were so passionate in our sports. He loved martial arts. I loved boxing. We need to have a strong heart, strong, strong cardio. And then we also had like and that. We love it. It's sparring. Mm. It's in the boxing and sparring. I, I, I love that. Like he loved doing sparring in karate. Yeah. So in. And with the time, we start to spar, to spar with each other uh, all the time. We loved it. Uh, so basically, we were starting with the, when we became a little bit older, 16 years old, uh, we start to do uh, weightlifting, you know, weightlifting to look good. But uh, already at that age, I, I, I looked at him with his split, with the, the face, the, the you know, because I was taking some pictures and, you know, I, I, I can see the guy has something. And I said, Jean-Claude, man, you, you, you look great. You, you, you can do it. You can make it. You know, already there we have that dream when we were already 16. He was 18 to go to Hollywood. So and I was always pumping him up. But with reality, I said, you know, my God, I love Bruce Lee, but you can be uh, as good as him. I mean, you know, you're taller than him. You you are, have more muscles. You are uh, handsome than him, to be honest. His face, we have to be honest. Uh, uh, you have charisma as much as he has charisma. Uh, uh, so you, why not, you know? And uh, uh, so, and you are better than Chuck Norris, even though after when I met Chuck, he was such, such a nice man. As an actor, I was not crazy about him, but as a man, to me, which is more important, I love the guy. That I have a story, we have a story with Chuck Norris, of course, and, and Mohammed Ali also. So basically, uh, I was always pumping him because he, he basically... He had back and forth. Sometimes he believed in himself, sometimes he doesn't. So when he doesn't, I'm there to, you know, no, oh, come on. I mean, you're crazy. You can do it. You can do it, man. So even in the training, the weightlifting, I was not concentrated on myself, you know. Sometimes I was skipping my training to train him. Oh. You know, I wanted just to for him to be the best he can be. So basically, that's how we, we grew up, you know. Yeah, that's that's funny because uh, you kept it up and you sent me great videos of your kids doing karate. And I know that you have you have a karate school, right? And you still teach. So that is very uh, important because you had that in your blood. You had that teaching others, passing on to others, sharing more than the ego of you being the star, which is very difficult, you know, when you have two people who want the same thing in, in a way you did. Uh, it's very difficult no, but for I one. Mean, come on. I mean, you, you can do things where, where uh, first of all, like my brother, uh, you know, he, he didn't believe in us. You know, he was uh, more like stable, not a dreamer. My brother was a dreamer, but he basically had limits in his dream. He had he he was married very young, and uh, uh, you remember my brother, right? Who played Attila in my of course, of so course. I was just I was just, I want just to explain you uh, uh, the situation. There is basically. He didn't believe in us. He said, I mean, you're crazy. Uh, he, you can't, you just cannot do it. Just stay uh, and have a normal work like me and, and you know, and get married. And, you know, I was not married until I was 40. And also because my mother would say, you have to think about yourself, my son. You have to have your kids. You have to have your kids. Because I was only thinking about my parents and my brothers and sisters. So my mom was the reason why I got married. Uh, late at 40, but I thank her because that's one of the best thing in my life is my wife and my four kids today. So thank God. Uh, and and basically my brother, uh, once he saw the success uh, with blood sport and then kickboxer, then he called me a lot and, you know, in Lionheart, uh, he wanted to be in it. Uh, because that was already an idea I had, which I spoke with him, spoke with uh, Jean-Claude, 
uh, my idea was like to do a, a, a move inspired by, we need to be inspired by that movie. I said to Jean-Claude, which I know he loved it also, my brother loved it also, is uh, Hard Times with Charles Bronson and James Coburn in the 70s. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. So that was paramount. So we tried to do first a remake, but they didn't want to. So we, we have the right to be inspired. So we spoke to Sheldon Ledish, who wrote Bloodsport, wrote one of the Rambo with Stallone, and then direct and wrote Lionheart. So that's how I came up with the story. And basically, uh, he really wanted to be in the movie. And I saw him, he could do Attila, you know? So basically, I asked uh, Sandeep Shah, uh, Sunil Shah, uh, Asha, I mean, entertainment, uh, uh, you know, it was uh, 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 the producers of Lionheart. Um, so basically, I t- told them about my brother, and they said, I mean, because they wanted me to play the part of Attila. They said, you just need to be like you were in in, in same visual. We want you to put the same makeup of Tong Po because Tong Po was a huge hit. We did it in 87. And Lionheart, we did it in 1989. So basically, they said, we want you to play Attila. Uh, 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 and we'll just, you know, change the name. Instead of Tong Po, we say Attila with the same visual. And uh, I said, uh, I pushed for my brother. Because somehow my dream came true, you know, and I wanted to share. That's what you're talking about also, to, to, to share. And, and it's so beautiful to share. I mean, my God, it's so beautiful because I realized my dream and I made my brother realizing his dream. But it was not easy because they said, yeah, but we don't understand. First of all, it's the first time somebody has a starring role and he wants to give it to his brother. That's the first time. We never saw that. <laughs> I say, he says, uh, I said, it's, first of all, it's not the king about the movie. Good. Tong Po, they already saw. People love new, new, new look. They love new look. They saw it. That's it. They, they saw it. Uh, it's not the same thing. Uh, they said, yeah, but what your brother did. What did he do? And my brother never did nothing. He was electrician, you know. He, he, he was working as electrician. He never did any any movies, even not a, a little part. Ne- nothing. So when when I said that to them, sorry, I mean, I, I just have a good feeling about. They said, I mean, come on. They said, I mean. Uh, it's impossible. I mean, look, uh, he needs to at least do something, show us something. So basically, I, I tried to tell them, look, Bloodsport, we even were not known was Harate Tiger before that, and, you know, and, and, and we never did anything before, and, and we worked very well. I mean, my, I, 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 I did Juan Paredes. I didn't do almost nothing before Juan Paredes. And then Tong Po, I just did Juan Paredes. I mean, that is not something you need to see the person, to feel the person, and then you can decide. So uh, I convinced them by saying, I'll pay for his airline ticket, for his stay, and you'll just look at him. So that's what we did. When they saw him, they were impressed, and that's how my brother got the part. Please tell me. Mohammed, please tell me your story with Muhammad Ali. You, you told me you have a great story with Muhammad Ali. I want to know. We all want to know your story. What happened? Actually, that was in 1984, the time we did the movie Breakdance as a, you know, extra. So uh, we were struggling. And um, uh, as usual, we take uh, our breakfast at the Brain- Ben Frank's. A oh. restaurant uh, on Sunset Boulevard was not too expensive. And we took uh, one tuna melt because we love that uh, breakfast, tuna melt, and a uh, little bit of strawberry. And, uh, mm. uh, but it was a nice plate for one person. And we share. We were sharing like that. It's not too expensive for us. Uh, so uh, we were like so happy because we were in breakdance, you know. <laughs> Our first after like... 
two years of struggling from 82 to 84, uh, we, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we were so happy. Uh, finally, we were on the screen. Even if it was just uploading, dancing, that's all. <laughs> so basically there, a man sees us and come to us. And then uh, he says, uh, ah, it's rare to hear, uh, you know, someone speaking in French because, you know, uh, uh, it's true. He, very, very, very few people speak French in Los Angeles, especially that time. So, uh, and he came and talked to us in French also. So we were kind of surprised. Ah, okay. So, and then he asked us, what are you doing? And then, uh, yeah, we just did uh, a movie, Breakdance, uh, and uh, we came to do movies, and we are so passionate, and uh, we came from Brussels. And then he says, uh, but uh, uh, are you originally from Belgica, from Belgium? I said, no, originally I'm from Morocco. He says, me too. I said, ah, okay. And I remember he, he was like around 60 years old. He's no, his name was Abdel Kader. I remember. And, um, you know, uh, we start, I start to ask him, you know, I said, what are you doing? He says, I am the assistant of Muhammad Ali. Wow. I said, oh my God. <laughs> Jean Claude and I were like, because starstruck, you know, we just love Muhammad Ali. Uh, and then uh, we said, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, I am his assistant. Because actually, Mohamed Ali loved Morocco. He was going to Morocco many times. He became friend with the king, Hassan II. Uh, so uh, he basically, uh, we just asked him, please, we just want to see him. We just want to uh, shake his hand. We just want to take a picture, if it's possible, uh, please. And he said, you know what? Stay there, half hour, I come back. Whoa. Half hour later, he comes back. The guy had good timing. And then he said, come over. Wow, we couldn't believe it. We're going to go see Mohammed Ali. You know, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> we were so excited, like two, two little boys. Wow. So we went, it was on Wilshire Boulevard was like, you know, open door and then security and then, you know, uh, many villa and then one of them, the villa of Mohammed Ali. I recognize outside, she was walking Veronica Porsche. It was at the time he was married to Veronica Porsche, his third spouse, which oh. he met in Zaire. She was a reporter. And that's how the first time he met him, uh, when he had that major fight with Foreman. With Foreman, yes. Foreman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rumble in the jungle. Basically, uh, and he was, we can see the window, you know, sitting down, and he was like reading the Quran, okay? So he closed the Quran, he gave a kiss to the Quran, and then he came to the door, and he opened the door for us, and then we came in, and we were like, wow, you know, it was so special moment. My God, uh, it was, he was so sweet. He was so nice. He uh, gave us a place to sit down and then he brought us a coffee. And then I remember he took a little uh, briefcase and then he opened it and then he did some tour, uh, you know, like a magician. He, he, he loved that. So he started to do a little magician tour. So uh, <laughs> so after that, we went up at the stair to go to an, in a place, in a room. But at first, it was like a vitrine. It was like a, a window inside, like a, a rope with crystal, many crystal. And we thought it was a beautiful rope. And then he said, yes, that's Elvis Presley who gave me as a gift. Yeah. I said, wow. Beautiful. So uh, 
we go inside the room and then it was a pool table in the middle and then around it was full of trophies of you know champion belt you know i mean my god it was very very impressive so after that it was the friday so uh, he said uh, because he know i'm from morocco of course you praying i said yeah and my uh, friend also is is praying ah okay and uh, <laughs> he said he's muslim i said i mean i respect his religion he respects mine so we go to the mosque on friday and sunday i go with him to the church and he says wow i remember he thought it was so cool and he loved that <laughs> wow so basically we went we went to the mosque and then we pray and then after that he said you know what i'm going to go train so if you want to come and see me training oh my god yes so he we went with him in his Rolls Royce, you know, to his uh, gym. It was really a dream, you know. We we're like, I mean, is that real? We were like, <laughs> we couldn't believe it, Jean Claude and I. So basically, we arrived to the boxing gym, and you know, he started to train. And then Jean Claude tell him, you know, my my friend, he's a boxer. Ah, oh, he looked at me. Uh, you boxing? I said, you know, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> and then uh, I, I was a little champion. You know, I was champion of Belgium. And I, I I did pretty good, actually, because almost all my fights I won by knockout. Wow. And then I had elbow problem because I was selected in the Olympic game, but I had a problem with my elbow and I couldn't go. I was very sad, actually. And that pushed me even more to do just movies then, you know. Anyway. Uh, he says, okay, come over. And they give me gloves. I go in. And then I look at Jean-Claude. You shouldn't have said nothing. You know, I was like kind of shy. <laughs> so basically, I go in the ring. And then I start to to box. You know, I move and, and I box. Bam. And then, you know, give some jabs. You know, I give some jabs. And then he stops. Mohamed Ali stops. And that was... One of my, if not the best compliment I had in my life. And he look at his friends and he says, he boxes like me. <laughs> so that was wonderful. And I never can forget that. And it was a beautiful time with uh, Mohammed Ali. And we took some pictures. I think you saw it. If you didn't saw it, I'll find it and I'll send it to you. Oh my goodness, that is an amazing story. So you just got to be at the right place at the right time sometimes. But, uh, you know, if you have heart, if you have passion, things do happen, right? So you just got to uh, maybe Absolutely. have patience. Absolutely, right? but the young people need to understand, you know, nothing is for nothing it means you know you, you have to work hard uh, you really have to work hard you have to be serious you have to be you know if you do only fiesta i mean then you know what can i say uh, it's not easy to to make it in life if you do only fiesta if you mm -hmm. go all the time to discotheque all the time to bars all the time drinking, all the time smoking. How do you want to succeed in life, really succeed? You know, it's it's very, very tough. So uh, if you work hard, you wake up early in the morning and you work hard and you be careful, of course, with your health by trying to eat health, healthy and, uh, you know, not touching all the bad things and, uh, you know, to, to, to believe in yourself and to be patient to be perseverant, to be honest, it helps because people start to really, you know, like you and then you have more chance when you are in the straight, you know, uh, path. And uh, then also when you do that in this life, then in the other life, you know, uh, it's it's going to be uh, rewarded, you know, when you are peaceful and you are a, a good person, uh, love, not you know, uh, violence. It's it's if you like that in life, uh, I really think it will help you in this life, especially patience, a lot of patience and perseverance. But also, as I said, once you are in front of God, you know, you'll be like. Uh, 
uh, rewarded uh, by uh, paradise. Mm, yes, I <laughs> believe so. Nice and sweet. So it's good. Either way, you are winning, you know, uh, yeah. in this life and in the other life. Do you do meditation or some t some type of work on your um, mental uh, ability? Yes, actually, I do that uh, in the morning. Uh, I first of all always thank God. I always thank God so much. I say I thank Him to give me my uh, eyes, you know, view. Mm -hmm. I thank Him. I can smell. I thank Him. I can taste. Taste. Uh, I thank Him. I can hear. I thank him, I can walk. I thank him, you know, uh, uh, every morning. I really thank him. I take like half hour of, of talking to God. Thank him so much for everything he gave me. And then always praying God to meet good people. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, uh, people who are better than me, that's what I, I ask God, to, to meet Better people than me, like that, I can learn better in life. So that's my prayer every morning. Mm -hmm. So you start the day with gratitude because it it helps you fuel your your mental state. Yeah, that's very yes, very good. I thank him for this beautiful life. I mean, my God, beautiful uh, nature God gave us. He gave us like paradise already here. When you think about it, you know. But again, you know, if 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 you think positive, positive things will happen to you. But if you think negative, then negative things will happen to you. Mm -hmm. So you, it, uh, someone, uh, oneself needs to be very careful with that. He needs to really uh, 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 believe in, in positivity. And every negativity in life, if you look at it, it, it you will see you have... A, a good thing, positivity. So, and when something doesn't happen like you want, it's just because God didn't give you this time to make it. But you know, it's maybe for a reason to 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 make it in another time. So, so someone needs to do needs to be patient, needs to do what he needs to do to make it in life. But if it doesn't work, he cannot start to be upset stress you know no he needs to see what's the mistake he's done what's the problem and then he try to rectify and try again because as long as you are alive it's always time for you to succeed in life i i, I love that way of seeing things because uh, you uh, sound like you're a person who uses religion in the right way a lot of people are extreme about religion or they believe that it's like a shaming culture. Like if if I don't do well, there will be sacrifice. If I if I'm a sinner, God will punish me. And it's like, well, 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 it's, it's mostly about trusting the process of life and that God is in. It's like a pilot of the airplane. So trust that you do your best and everything will go accordingly. Do you avoid like watching the news or watching bad media, uh, violent movies? Do you do any sort of avoiding of circumstances that you know that will maybe drive you down or your students? Uh, actually, I, uh, of course, keep up, you know, with the news. I watch, you know, uh, different channel, but the one I like a lot on the information, it's CNN. Mm -hmm. So I do watch sometimes, but most of the time when I have time, I listen to music. I listen to music and I always love that music. We talk about love and peace and, you know, uh, beautiful words. And uh, that's what I love to share with my children. So positivity and then you know working hard i have four boys and they uh, that's what i advise to young parents uh to put their kids very young you know in in in, in sports uh and uh, then they'll have more chance to succeed in life because sports will help them a lot a lot i put them in the karate shotokan kata Kata, it's you don't touch me, I don't touch you, okay? Mm -hmm. So I've done boxing before. I did a mistake because I don't think human being should should hit human being, to be honest. God gave us this, this body, gave us this brain 
it's like a temple. It shouldn't be uh, hating each other. I, I mean, I don't. That's why I put my kids in karate Shotokan, not the fighting, but the kata, which helps a lot to have better memorization, better memoir, you know, uh, and it will help them at school. So I advise very much the young parents to see the dojos around them. I'm sure, I mean, karate is everywhere. And then to go by themselves and to check out the dojos, check out the masters and speak with the parents who already have their daughter or their son already, they are black belt, and see with the dojos who all win a lot of tournament because that proves the master is very good. And that's where you need to put your kids very young. I put them around two years old, three years old. So my older is 18 now is, I don't know if you heard Jean-Claude Van Damme talking about him and he was really impressed about what the level he is, he's a, you know, a mondial level, he's worldwide level now uh, in, in karate. Fantastic. Uh, he's been many times champion. So I put my kids very young, and that's what I've been doing for over 30 years. I go to maternities, you know, to where the little schools for little kids three years old, four years old, and then I bring a master, you know, some young uh, uh, kids who do karate very well with their kimono, do a demonstration. And the goal is for the parents to see them, the kids to see them and to motivate them. And then, thank God, it really helps because, you know, most of the time they even don't know they were in the, uh, around the area, you know. So I always choose the best master and I do that. And then they have that, that connection and then they do, you know, the inscription, they... they, they uh, uh, have their kids in that in that dojo. So uh, that's my way to try to help mothers out there, because when the boy or the daughter uh, goes bad with drugs, example, or you know uh, bad habits, smoking, and, you know hashish and alcohol too much, all that stuff, uh, uh, then uh, that helps because when you have karateka people, uh, most of the time, they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't do all that, you know. Uh, even if they drink, you know, they are very, very, they control themselves very well. And uh, basically, uh, that's my way to, to help those mothers, because again, if the boy or the girl goes bad, it's the mother who suffers so much. And God knows how much we all love our mama, our mothers. So, so that's my way to help them and, uh, you know, to, to motivate young people to do sports and not drugs. So that's my way to fight drugs, who's the biggest cancer in this planet. It's, it's funny how we are used to seeing you kick that pillar as Tong Po, but uh, you actually <laughs> kick a lot more pillars in real life. So you're the real life Tong Po. Thank you so much for sharing this because I really find it amazing. And uh, I, I would obviously like to get to how you got into the movies. I've heard a couple of your interviews where you tell the story of uh, when you reached California, the story in the airplane. I will let people let that let the, know that I will let people know that through other interviews so we don't have to always touch the same points. But I do want to know um, when you got there and you first got breaking. Okay, so. Silly question first, because I really need to know this. Who dressed you like that for breaking? Were you already using that or wearing that in the streets in the 80s in California? Or somebody looked at you and, and was like, okay, Van Damme's going to be in a leotard <laughs> and you're going to be, and you're gonna be in, a, in a, those uh, shorts and uh, 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 upper body uh, bare-chested. <laughs> No, actually, on Venice Beach, we met a very nice guy, Tyrone Pork, who was taking care of the casting of the extra, you know? Uh, and then that's where we met him. And he basically did the, how they call it that, uh, casting, uh, savage casting, you know? It's like, mm -hmm. 
uh, you just go out and look at people and uh, and they were in a hurry they needed people and they just ask us you know if you want us to if you want to come you know you have a slice of pizza and then you come and you'll be on the screen and we want to we, we, we were like oh yes we, that's what we are here for <laughs> so that's how we we got the part in breakdance as extra but uh, were you wearing that was jean-claude van damme was he was he wearing that leotard in his everyday life who dressed him up like that come on <laughs> yeah actually he trains with that you know uh, that's how he trained with stretching with weightlifting most of the time he had that clothes so we were just coming out from gold gym oh. we went to the gold gym and and training and then when we came out on venice beach we we that guy came to us talked to us and we said yeah of course so so that's how it happened so that's exactly like that is so jane fonda you know that is so 80s 80s style <laughs> yeah. no i love it i love it it's so <laughs> no, he 80s. always had that i mean already in brussels uh, wow. he always had that leotard uh, <laughs> he that's he, he feels good with that and, and and he trains with that yes Fantastic, fantastic. So, uh, so the, the first one was breaking, and then uh, how did Bloodsport come about? Basically, we uh, met Menachem Golan in Milano the first time before to go to Hollywood. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Festival of Milano. It's like a American film market. It's like Festival of Cannes. Uh, you know. So basically. The difference between Milano, uh, Festival of Milano, uh, and, and, and Cannes, Cannes is a, a lot of prestige, but uh, Milano is way more business. Mm. So we went there, and then uh, we had a tough time to go in. Somebody gave us the badge. So anyway, we went in. We met so many people and yeah, like so many rooms with like a little, uh, you know, uh, uh, chairs with with uh, TV and with posters. And each room you had uh, 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 someone who sells a movie. So and then you have distributor of all over the planet who comes there. OK, so it was like crazy. It was like then you had big screen, you know, in fact, a small screen, but in a bigger room. To, to watch the movie. So we were like, wow, walking there, like uh, very impressed. And then, because uh, it was our first time we went to a place like that. And then that's where we met a lot of people who told us, you know, you need to go to Hollywood, you need to go to Hollywood, because we were trying to have a part in the movie. They said, but that's not the place to be, you know, here we are selling movies. So a lot of people were saying, you know, to go to Hollywood, to go to Hollywood. One of them was Menachem Golan from Canon Production. That really gave us a boost, you know. Uh, with all those people, we had so many cards, business cards with us, so many. Everybody gave us business cards, a lot of people. A lot of people were very nice, to be honest. So you have to go there, you have to go there, but, and then that's what we did. And once we were in Hollywood, you know, it was very, very tough, very, very tough. And then one day, one day, 1985, uh, we got a big break with uh, Predator, which was called Hunter, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was also... Basically, Jean-Claude was just inside the costume, you know, and then problems happens. Too long to explain right now. So so basically, uh, uh, we were in that movie, uh, and after happened problem with the costume, and then they had to change. Van Damme was going to be Predator, was going to be the bad guy in Predator. That's right. It was inside the costume, okay? Okay. Oh, okay. It was just okay. a costume. Uh, 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 anyway, at the parallel time and why we were going to Marina del Rey in the, the, the studio where they do the makeup and the cast to do the costume, so we had to go back and forth. That was with 20th Century Fox. Anyway, one day we have to meet two girls in, in a piano bar, Uh, and uh, it was also a restaurant uh, on uh, it called uh, Sienega, 
385 Sienega uh, piano bar. And then uh, basically we go in, but once we want to go in, Menachem Golan comes out. Ah, and we didn't see him for many years. We tried to meet him, but so many people under him was not easy. It was a certain Bob who said, you know, you just cannot disturb him. Uh, give, give it the pictures, and then if you have something, we'll let you know. And Canon Production is is, is the same uh, producer who produced Breakdance, you know? So, basically, uh, uh, he came out from that piano bar restaurant, and then we, we see him, and he was kind of drunk, and then we try to t- remind him we saw him in Milano, and then he recognized us, he speaks a little bit French and then give us his business card, say, we moved. He said, here is my business card, call me. He said, call me and then we'll set up a meeting. Mm. Uh, um, but he didn't say that like that. He just said, call me. And then we were talking and so happy and dreaming, you know, because uh, Menachem Golan uh, was a huge producer at that time. You know, he did big movies. Uh, actually, it was the bigger independent company at that time, you know, Canon Production. He's the one who was doing movies with Chuck Norris and like Michael Dudikoff, American Ninja with, uh, you know, Chuck Norris in Machine Action, then uh, Charles Bronson with uh, uh, Justice, uh, uh, Dead Wish. Uh, he basically uh, started to do movies with Stallone, you know, with Sylvester Stallone, oh, yeah. uh, like over the top. So he started to be, uh, he was very big uh, producers. Uh, and then uh, talking, and then the girls left because they got upset because we didn't give them attention. <laughs> so anyway, uh, after that, uh, in the morning, I said to Jean-Claude, you know, let's go to Menachem. He said, what? I said, let's go to him. Let's go to him. We have his address. Let's go. He said, uh, what? Well, I mean, he said to call us. I said, yeah, but I, I didn't like it. Just calling, I'm not like, I said, no, let's just go there. <laughs> so so basically, uh, he followed me. We left, we went. And then I remember that time uh, when we arrived uh, at, at the building on San Vicente Boulevard. I remember it was a very strong wind. And then I had to get the corner of the building and just to, you know, to, to push and, and go and, and keep going to, to, to enter in the building. And then Jean-Claude, I remember, he said to me, <laughs> this is a sign of God. He said, we shouldn't go. Let's go back. Let's just call him like I told you. I said, <laughs> shut the fuck up and let's go. <laughs> said, shut the fuck up and follow me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we we went inside and you had the security people. So you had walkie-talkie, you have the security talking with uh, uh, Jewish action, accent, you know, because <laughs> yeah. Menachem Golan come from Tel Aviv, from Israel. And then, you know, and, and he, he had, uh, uh, his partner was Joachim Globus, uh, his cousin. Uh, Joachim Globus was more like uh, all contability, administrative, and Menachem was more artistic. The security was there, the reception there, so they said, well, can we help? I said, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, we had a dinner with Menachem Golan yesterday in a piano bar restaurant. And then Jean-Claude looked at me, you know, I said, because we didn't have dinner with him. <laughs> Who's that bullshit? <laughs> I said, yeah, we had a dinner with him. And he said to come, uh, you know, at the office. Ah, uh, hold on. So they called him. When they called him, he, of course, knew he was at the piano bar restaurant. So, I, you know, he said, maybe I met some people and and uh, and uh, was drunk and I told them to come and I forgot. So when I was, of course, counting on that, you know, I said, it would be a miracle if we go in, but let's give it a try. We have nothing to lose. So anyway, at the reception, they said, oh, okay, go in uh, at the penthouse. So 
Uh, be careful with the story I tell you now. Follow me very carefully. You have four floors, okay? <laughs> yeah. First, second, third, fourth floor. And then you have the penthouse, okay? So we go in, we push penthouse. We go. Go inside. Jean-Claude was very impressed because he said, you, <laughs> you're crazy. He was impressed, but at the same time, he was afraid because he said... I mean, when they'll find out we didn't eat with him and, you know, what? why are you lying? I mean, you know, it's, I said, no, Claude, we have no choice. <laughs> we have to try. So anyway, uh, it was kind of negative. So that didn't make it easier, trust me. Uh, <laughs> so basically we sit down and he's screaming, you know. Menachem Galan, you hear him, we hear him screaming. And Jean-Claude said to me, let's get out, let's get out, let's not stay here. <laughs> so basically why Menachem Golan was screaming is because they were making a deal with the agent of Sylvester Stallone uh, for over the top. Uh, I know after that I understood they were asking $20 million at that time, imagine, in 1986, uh, end of 85. Uh, basically, yeah, I mean, and then he wanted to direct. Menachem Golan wanted to direct. Uh, the agent of uh, Sylvester Stallone wanted a strong director, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it was very expensive. You have directors for like $5 million, $4 million, and more or less. Anyway, he said, no, 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 I will direct myself, the movie. So basically, they were screaming, especially about the money and all that. Uh, and I know they came down from $20 million to $12 million. So he was negotiating, you know, and the way they negotiate, it's very, uh, you know, it's a loud voice. Uh, anyway, Menachem Golat comes out. When he comes out, he sees us sitting down. Ah, it's you. Okay, uh, go to the second floor. Go see, go see Bob. Bob is the guy from the casting. Hmm. Uh, and then he he leaves. He leaves. Uh, yeah, uh, to go see his cousin because his cousin had the office next to him, Johan. Anyway, Jean Claude there, of course, was very upset. I told you and this and that, and I mean, Bob, we already saw him, and you know, he's a homosexual and he wants something else, and you know, and, <laughs> and, and it's true, Bob had. Anyway, so we go on the elevator, and then when we go on the elevator, Jean Claude pushes zero to get out. I push two. He said, What? What are you doing? You want me to go see that, that, that guy? I mean, Anyway, a lot of negativity it was not easy. Just say, follow me. Just follow me. So I go. And then Bob comes out. Ah, we are true. You are trying to go above my head. Oh. And then I say to Bob, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. It's not that. We met at the piano bar restaurant. And, you know, he... Uh, uh, he told us to come and uh, no, 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 we don't want to do that. But I said to you, I have your pictures. I have everything. And he looked at Jean-Claude, you know, and I will call you when I will have something for you. And Jean-Claude looked at me. I look at him. And then, you know, he basically uh, made understand, you know, he need he know what he needs to do. What he needs to say. I mean, I was kind of shocked saying like that, you know, with him and me. And basically I said, listen, I mean, you know, uh, we love girls. I mean, you love guys, which we have no problem, but we love girls, you know. Uh, uh, sorry. I mean, you know. Uh, <laughs> sorry. So anyway, his phone, his phone rings, you know, his phone rings. And then he was going to come up with us at the elevator. I was hoping he doesn't come at the elevator, you know, exit out. Because if you're out of the, that entrance, that's it. No way to come back. Trust me. So I said, no, no, I mean, your phone is ringing. We already disturbed you. We're sorry. We apologize. Next time, we'll just wait for your call. Okay, good. 
And then he will go to his phone and we go to the elevator. Jean-Claude push zero again. You know, when the <laughs> elevator go goes away. down, you cannot go, go away. Put push up. <laughs> it's impossible. So what did I do? I pushed one. We get up, we get out at the first floor. Jean-Claude was upset again. <laughs> and there I was really upset. There I just said to Jean-Claude, I was, he knows me. I'm very sweet, very nice. But when I get upset, I get upset. He knows that. And then he just followed me. And we go at the stairs, up stairs, until the penthouse again. Oh, my God. And then Jean-Claude says, you crazy. You fucking crazy. You are sick. You like that. I mean, going up the <laughs> stairs and he says all that thing to me. You are crazy. You are, you want us to be in prison. I mean, what, what do, I mean, what are you talking about in prison? I mean, we're not killing people. We just want to meet Menachem. <laughs> so anyway, we go, we go up <laughs> and then uh, we sit down at the same place and then he sees us. He says, what, what's going on? What happened? He was coming back from, from his, his cousin. Jesus. I said, oh, but we went at uh, Bob uh, on the second floor and we didn't find him. So, but you know what? If we disturb you, uh, we just wanted to see you a little bit, but it's okay. We, we leave. And then he said, no, no, no. Okay. But two minutes, not more. Two minutes. I said, okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So he get wait until I call you. So he goes back into his office, needed to do other things. Then Helen, the secretary, comes, brings us a coffee, you know, uh, little uh, cookies. <laughs> and then Jean Claude was like, he could he couldn't believe it. He said, but no, once we in his office, what are we going to do? He says, you know, he was like blocked. You know, I said, you know what? He's a Jewish. So what we have to think is like we are in the market selling carpets. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when I come in, when I come in, I'm going to put chairs and you go, you put your splits and you put, you give your muscles and you're going to show like we show a nice, beautiful carpet. And we, <laughs> oh my God. So I said, you just put everything you have. Anyway, he said, okay, 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 okay. So anyway, Menachem calls us. We go in. Menachem was like this with his big tummy, you know? <laughs> big belly. With his glasses, with his tongue out like this. <laughs> and he looks at us. And I go, I take, I take the chairs. Jean-Claude go do his plate. I put like some uh, uh, pictures on his desk. And he looks... And, <laughs> and you guys are crazy. And says, he looked at us and he mm. says, okay, I have your contact. If we need you, we'll call you. I don't like that because I know nothing will happen. Yep. We've been there many years, always the same singing, you know, always the same thing. Once someone says to you, I will call you, you have nothing. No, not yeah. one time, not two times, so many times it happens. So I said, I went to him. I came close to him and I said, Mr. Menachem, with all the respect I owe you, you are making a very big mistake. Boom. He looked at me and I had to be quick because I was afraid if he caused the security, you know? <laughs> so I said, he is playing now a movie. We are, you know, with Schwarzenegger. He's playing the bad guy with 20th Century Fox. He said, he said Hunter? But because at that time it was not Predator, it was Hunter. Then they oh, changed the name. Oh. Hunter? Schwarzenegger? He's playing the villain? I said, yeah, the villain. He said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because in my mind, I know he signed Dolph Lundgren for Master of the Universe. And Dolph Lundgren played the bad guy against Stallone. 
So I said here with Schwarzenegger, he's not supposed to know he was in a costume. Okay, mm -hmm. because Jean-Claude didn't like it when I said that. He hit me with his knees under the table. Why the fuck are you talking about the predator? I mean, about the hunter. I mean, I, I, we, they're going to, I was just like a clown, you know, inside the costume. We don't see my face. We don't see nothing. It's electronic, uh, you know, the, 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 the alien is, is just the alien. It's not me. I mean, why are you saying that to him? But I was just, I had nothing to lose, man. I, I said, I'll give it to I, I just tried because I know we had no, nothing to lose. So Menachem Golan said, okay, hold on. He called Helen and he said to her to talk to Jackie Birch. Jackie Birch is the casting director. Okay. And then, then when she called her and she, do you know, you, you know, they always put uh, uh, on the, you know, uh, uh, list you, they put the, the good guy and the bad guy. Oh, yeah, like yeah, they yeah. they didn't put alien. Or they didn't explain the costume. They just said, Schwarzenegger, Van Damme. Wow, wow, nice. So that's what Jackie Birch said to, 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 to wow. Helen. And, you Not know, those know. people are extremely busy. Extremely busy. Trust me. Then Helen comes to Benachem and says, yes. Uh, yeah, Jean-Claude Van Damme is playing the, the heavy. Menachem gonna look at us. He says, okay. Uh, you want credit. Do you have a lawyer? Uh, yeah, we have a lawyer. Uh, okay, uh, so we are going to do uh, three pictures deals. Ooh. And then he, 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 he took he took he took uh, uh, he, his draw. You know, he pulled up his draw. He he took the screenplay blood sport and he put it on the table. That's going to be your first movie. Oh my god! And then Jean Claude takes the screenplay. I remember looked at it and he he he, he became white. I mean, he was white, so he, he, he couldn't believe it, and me too. <laughs> so, so he turned the pages of the screenplay, and then he asked Menachem Golan, he said, Where, what is my part? A Menachem Golan looked at him and says, you imbecile, you're the star of the movie. And I will like it. Talk. That's how why we got our first big break. Wow! Because you're a bullshit artist. I'm sorry to say, <laughs> you're an artist. <laughs> wow! <laughs> that is amazing. That's how you do it, right? To step over casting projects. That guy Bob must must have been really mad after that, right? Oh, you fuckers! <laughs> you went after, you went above my head, but you got it made. So, that is a great story. That is a great story. And uh, how was the how was shooting Bloodsport? Was it tough or was it smooth? Was it a tough venture? I mean, Bloodsport was like a, what can I say? It's like you you planning like 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 a dream, you know? It's wow. like. We were like, uh, wow, this is, is this true? I mean, is this, uh, 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 we're working and it's like, it was so, you know, it's really a, a dream coming true. So uh, we were enjoying every moment, but it was hard. It was tough, you know, sometimes 18 hours a day of work and Jean-Claude with his bipolarity, because he said it himself, you know, I couldn't say he's bipolar if he didn't say it. So in the interview, he said it many times. Yes. So that's why I, I say, you know, I, I won't say that. Uh, but anyway, uh, so that was the tough part. Uh, he, and then I had to, you know, talk to him. And, and I knew we needed to just, you know, I knew that the, the uh, he he's more like uh, evening time, night time, Jean Claude. You know, morning time it's better not to to talk too much with him. Uh, so I I knew the best time and the, the you know where we can uh, 
talk to him, do things. And so we were trying to do scenes with uh, other people like that. We work with him in the evening night because I try to, to explain the producer, you know, it was Mark Dissal who mm. uh, came to Hong Kong. Yes. But the, the big producer, the, the, the main one, évidemment, is, uh, is Menachem Golan and, and, and Joachim Globus. Me, but uh, but Menachem, Mark Dissal was the one who brought the screenplay written by Sheldon Ledish, story of Frank Dukes. He's the one who, who brought the screenplay to uh, Menachem Golan. So uh, they wanted Chuck Norris at first, you know, Mark Dissal. He was hoping for Chuck Norris, but uh, Chuck Norris didn't want to do it. Uh, he was doing, you know, those missing action, you know, missing impossible. So uh, then also Michael Didiakov didn't want to do it. Uh, and then he was staying there in the, in, in the shelf. Then that's how Menachem said, OK, I'm going to put a very little money in this movie. And then I'll wait when the, the movie with Schwarzenegger comes out. So that's the business mind they have, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. And that's... Uh... So how long did it take to shoot? Like a couple of months, maybe? How long did it take to shoot Bloodsport? Actually, it was uh, six weeks in, in Hong Kong. Six weeks of shooting, of shooting. But of course, you have pre-production, you have post-production. How does Kickboxer come along? I mean, uh, was it uh, how many years after uh, Bloodsport uh, did you do Kickboxer? After Bloodsport... Uh, the success of Bloodsport, they wanted to do, uh, they proposed Cyborg. To be honest, I didn't want to do it. Uh, I said to Jean-Claude, we need to do the sequel mm -hmm. of Bloodsport. Oh, we yeah. need to do the sequel. And Jean-Claude was more like, no, I don't want to do martial arts movies. I want to do more like Schwarzenegger. I want this. I, want... I said, Jean-Claude, that is our speciality. We should stick on blood sport, please. So he didn't listen to me there. And then we went, did Cyborg. And then after that, he wanted to do another style of Schwarzenegger. And then, thank God, we had Kickboxer. Uh, and we did it. And then after that, again, he wanted to go back to March to action to, to those movies like Schwarzenegger. And then I came up with the idea of Hard Times with Charles Bronson, James Cameron, and we did Lionheart. And after that, we had a problem, him and I, and then he was on his own and I was on my own. So I thank you so, so much, Bruno. And I hope to see you in Portugal. Yes, you will be Can here you very me? shortly. So uh, if, if, if I get to go to up north and meet you in person, that would be amazing. And maybe sometime we can continue the conversation because this was very uh, insightful and uh, we can see the real Tong Po uh, behind the fictional Tong Po, which is even better. So thank you so much, Mohamed, for your time. Thank you. And, and, thank you uh, to you, Bruno. Thank you so much. I would love to stay longer with you. And I thank you so much, Bruno, to you and the director and the team for inviting me. I really, it's a pleasure to me. And uh, what can I say to people? The secret, the real secret of... of uh, 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 the, you know, success in life that I'm talking especially to the young people, it's to respect their body, of course, and respect their parents. Because today, a lot of young people don't respect their parents. And, you know, especially the mommy. And it's the mommy where we have to be really respectful, listening to them. And that's the secret of success in life. Peace and love. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, my friend. Bye.